Now, the success of your WordPress website largely depends on the hosting service that you choose. Think of it like the foundations of a house. Even if you decorate it beautifully, a weak foundation can cause all manner of problems. Now, this means that even if you try lots of different ways to make your website better, if your hosting isn't up to par, well, you might not make much difference at all. Now, instead of worrying about complex server details, your focus should be on growing your business. Choosing a good WordPress hosting service is a wise decision. It's like having a strong team behind you, saving you time and effort and making your website run smoother. Plus, with WordPress hosting, you can get some great perks. Things like faster website loading times, automatic behind the scenes improvements like caching and so on, stronger protection for your site and safe areas to test new ideas or staging sites as we call them. Now, I'm going to be using Cloudways in this example who have kindly sponsored this video. But as always, I'm not going to give you any opinions. I'm simply going to demonstrate the features and options available, and then you can make a more informed decision for yourself. So the first thing we're going to need to do is set up a server on Cloudways. Now, you can test this out for three days with no obligation. You don't need a credit card or anything else. You can try it. Make sure you're happy with it before you do anything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop over and choose the option for start free. We can now fill out our relevant details and then simply click on start free. So the first thing we need to do is set everything up once you've confirmed the email that's come through from Cloudways. So let me quickly run through this. I'm going to do this very quickly. First things first, we're going to select our server. DigitalOcean is perfectly fine. For our demonstration purposes, we'll leave everything set up. But you'll notice as we make changes here, our pricing will update at the bottom. So if we set two gigabytes, you can see there's the monthly and hourly charges. For example, we're going to set this to one gigabyte premium. We're going to set our server location in this example to London, which is the closest to me. And we've now basically set up the starting point for our server, but nothing's been created yet, so don't worry. Next up, we're going to create our application. Now, when it comes to Cloudways, an application is effectively the software you want to sit on your server. So for our example, we're going to use WordPress, but you could have other options if you wanted to. And you see WordPress version 6.2, we'll give this a name, we'll name the server, and if you want to, you can actually name your project as well. Okay, so everything is now in place. And you see, we haven't had to give any credit card details or anything, so you can try this with no obligation. We'll hit launch now, and that will then take a few minutes to go and set everything up for us. So you'll see now that we've got our servers and our applications in our dashboard. Now, currently, our WP Touch test server is still in the process of being set up, and will take around seven minutes. We're effectively using Cloudways to sit on top of DigitalOcean, and therefore, there's a little bit of kind of to and fro, got to go back and forth to get everything set up. It tells us the size of our server, the location, and if we come into our applications, when we have our application set up, once the server's created, they will be listed here as well. And there we go. After a few minutes, you can see we now have our server all set up. And if we hop into the applications, you'll see there's our test application also set up. So now we've got a couple of options. We could start building our website or we can migrate an existing website over to our new Cloudways account. And there are two ways in which we can handle that process. We can upgrade our account to a paid account and we can benefit from the free migration that we can have as part of that. And you can access that by simply clicking on the need a hand from the right hand side and scroll down until you see the option that says support ticket. Click to create a support ticket and from there you can start up the whole migration process and get Cloudways to handle that aspect for you. Alternatively, you can use the free Cloudways plugin to migrate things over. I'll show you how to set that up now. Simply come into your live website. Come into the Add Plugin section and search for Cloudways Migrator and click Install Now, then activate it. And then we can go through the process of migrating our site to Cloudways. So fill out the relevant details. We'll start with our email. We'll agree to the blog files terms and conditions and hit Migrate. And now that's going to ask us for the information we need to migrate it over to our Cloudways account. As you can see, all the information required is inside you. So if you need to access this information, all of it is available inside your Cloudways account. If you come into your servers and open up your server, you'll find all of the details inside here for your master credentials, for your username, your password, the IP address, and so on. Fill out the relevant information, and then start the migration process and migrate your site over to Cloudways. Once that's done, you'll have your site on Cloudways and you're ready to start working. So once you've completed your migration, or if you're already using Cloudways, once you come into your account, you can access your servers in your applications. Let's open up our applications, and I'm going to concentrate on this first e-commerce website. We're going to open this up, and inside here, all of the options are available to access all of our settings. We're going to come into the application settings, and inside here, we've got a couple of things I want to draw your attention to that are very useful when it comes to working with optimizing your site. 
Now, Varnish is enabled on every single application on every server you set up, but you can disable it if you don't want to use this. And Varnish is basically a caching tool. This allows you to cache pages of your website and speed up delivery to anybody that accesses it. So good starting point. There are a couple of options that I want to show you in a moment. But before we do, I want to show you some of the other things inside you that you can enable should you want to. Now, if you have a site that is available in multiple different languages, you may want to enable the Geo IP detection. Now, this sounds quite complicated, but all it really means is that your website, when it's loaded in a country outside of, for example, the UK, America, and so on, it'll geolocate those based upon their IP address. And if they're using a different language, it will optimize and cache everything for that additional language. Therefore, you end up with a cached version in the relevant language in whatever country the end user or viewer is accessing your website. This can be incredibly beneficial when you have a site that targets multiple different locations around the world and you want to optimize things. The next thing is we've got device detection and this works in a similar kind of fashion to geo IP detection but this works on the device detection. So in other words if you create a website that has a different version for your tablet, your mobile, and your desktop. You can use the device detection to deliver up and cache the relevant version to the end user based upon what device they're currently accessing your site on. Again, you just need to click the little switch to activate that option. And the final feature in Sitejo I want to draw your attention to is the ignore query string option. Now, if you use social media to share links to your content, to your website, whatever it is, you'll know that if someone, for example, is on Facebook and they click on that link, there's a long string of text added to the end of the link that you've set up on there. This is a query string that's being passed over from Facebook or other options to the actual page itself. It's used for tracking and other purposes, but that can slow your site down. So what you can do is you can actually set this to ignore the query string and then it will ignore everything that comes after that link and cache only the information prior to it. This speeds up the whole process of delivering your website for anybody following that link. Now it is worth bearing in mind that if you have tracking enabled yourself, this could upset or cause a problem with that side of things. So bear that in mind, if you're tracking things, you may not want to use it. But if you don't, check out the ignore query string because that may optimize your site just a little bit more. So now that we've taken a look at some of those key options available in your Cloudways dashboard, let's take a look at the Breeze plugin and what we can do with that. Now, Breeze is installed as part of a typical website when you install it inside Cloudways. And what this does is this gives you options to optimize your website. So let's take a quick look at some of those options. If we come into the settings, you can see things are broken down on the left hand side. Now we're not going to go with every option inside you. I'm going to quickly just show you some of the things that you can do and the ones I would recommend you take a look at in a little bit more detail. So first of all, if we take a look at the basic options, you can enable or disable the whole caching system. Now I would always recommend that you leave this on unless you're using some other service and you don't want the two to compete with each other. But we're sticking with the Cloudways options for this example. You can set your purge cache. Now, what this will do is this will set a specific time frame before the cache is purged to make sure that it has the most up-to-date versions of any of the pages or the content available to the end user and still optimize for speed. You can enable gzip compression, and this will basically, like, like a zip file, will compress things on your website and, again, make things load just a little bit quicker. You can cache inside your browser. You can use lazy loading. Always make sure that if you're using lazy loading inside Breeze, you don't also have it set up inside maybe the theme or additional plugins because it can cause a bit of an issue. So enable it only in the one spot. And then if you want to, you can make sure you, you protect your links. And if you want to cache information based upon the logged in user, if they have a role of administrator, editor, and so on, you can do that inside here as well. All pretty simple and straightforward. Jump into the file optimization, and this is where you can really start to get into the woods. Now, the first thing I want to say before you do anything with this is make sure that you only test one setting out at a time. You clear your cache and you test things out on the front end of your website. That's important when you do any kind of minification. Now, what exactly is minification, you're probably asking? Well, what it means is when you have a HTML file or a CSS file or a JavaScript file, there's lots of spaces and new lines and things in there that take up a little bit of space when it comes to the file size. And you don't really need those. So what this does is this will strip all of that out and just minimize and eke out the most sort of optimized version of that particular file. So for example, if we HTML minify, we enable this option, we can come down and save our page we're going to do that is we're going to come out to Breeze in the top and we're going to choose the option to purge all cache. This will get rid of any cached version of your website. This means then that when you test it out, you are using the most up-to-date fresh version and you can test to make sure that minification hasn't caused a problem. 
So what you need to do is come back over to your site, refresh it, and then just go to a couple of pages and make sure that everything looks the way you'd expect it to look. So we come into products, for example. We'll open a product up and we'll take a look. Everything's looking pretty good. No real problems there at all. So everything looks the way it should. Now you're just going to come back and repeat the same process. So if you want to use the CSS minification, you can enable it. And you'll see this opens up some additional options. So you can go through these one at a time, saving, refreshing, clear your cache, and test it out. I know it takes a little bit of time, but the speed improvements can be beneficial and quite substantial, but you don't want to have a problem where something goes wrong on your website. And this isn't anything to do specifically with the Breeze plugin or anything else. This is what you have in any kind of tools like this where you have minification. Test it, make sure everything works okay. Moving on to the next options, we've got preload. And what this allows you to do is preload things like your fonts, links, and so on. Now, preloading links can be very useful if you have a site with lots of links and you want to have a nice optimized version. This will preload pages based upon the links that are on the page, assuming what the user, the visitor, may want to look at next. And this can have a big, big impact on the speed of your website for the end user. Pretty useful. Again, test out and see what you think and make sure it works okay. Advanced options. Now, this is where you can handle things like Choosing what links, what pages inside your site are never cached. You may have certain things like legal pages and things. You don't want to cache them. Well, just drop the link inside you and they won't be cached. They'll always serve the live version. And you can also do things like caching query strings, things like that. Some of the tweaks inside you, you can disable things like emojis and you can host certain files locally like your Google fonts, your analytics and so on. These can all speed things up because they're not going back and forth to the server. If you come to your Heartbeat API, you can set up how this works, and this is part of WordPress itself. I'm not going to worry too much about that, but you can control it should you want to. And then your database options. This is great. As your site starts to grow, more information is stored in your database, and a lot of it is redundant information, things like drafts and things like that. Well, you can use this function to clear that out and just optimize your database to make sure it's as nice and fast as possible. If you want to use a CDN, you can use the options inside you. You can activate it and set things up here as well. Your varnish settings, there's not a lot inside you. Most of this is handled on the actual server itself. And as you can see, we can purge varnish, we can auto purge it and set how often it's automatically purged for us. If we come into the tools section, this is where you can import or export your settings for the Breeze plugin if you want to share those same settings across multiple different sites and you don't want to have to go through the whole process. And if you've got any questions or you're just unsure how a function works, you can hop into the FAQ section and take a little look inside there. It's all pretty simple and straightforward. So once you've optimized everything, the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you test everything out to see where you were and where you are right now. And you can do this in a multitude of different ways. Let's use GT Metrics for this example. Let's pop in our site and click on Analyze. Now I'm logged in, so this is set up to be closer to my server, which we set up in London, so I can see the most optimized version of the server setup that we have. And there we go, the results are in. As you can see, we've got our largest content full paint, one of our web vitals, which is under half a second to load our homepage in. That's pretty, pretty respectable. And if we want to come in and take a look at, for example, our performance, we can open that up. And inside here, we can see all our core web vitals and see how well optimized everything is. So our FCP is pretty good. We've got our time to interactive, 700 milliseconds before someone can start to use everything. Total blocking time, your speed index, your largest content full paint, and so on. Everything is looking the way we want it to. Nice and quick and pretty responsive. I think you'll agree. So if you want to test out Cloudways for yourself, there's a link in the description. You can test it out for three days, no obligation, no credit card required, and you can find out how optimized your website can be if you put it onto the Cloudways servers. As always, I do welcome your comments feedback and recommendations, drop those in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.